everybody, it's Coach Jessica Hoke here, and I am here with the second video of the Moms Matter series to talk about beating depression as a stay-at-home mom. Have you ever felt isolated in prison in your own home, just lonely, sad, depressed, just of the mundane? You just feel like days are just repeating themselves, and it's an endless struggle. It's not hard to let depression seep in, but I'm here to tell you that you are not alone and that you can beat this. I remember when I first became a stay-at-home mom, I, me and my husband made the decision that I would be the stay-at-home parent and to come home and to kind of be overwhelmed. At first I was overwhelmed at what to even do. I mean, the baby, Darissa, she, we would do the same things as she was so little still, so she was napping all the time, eating all the time, napping and eating, napping and eating, tummy time, this time, you know, doing the simple things that come with a baby. Sometimes she was more clingy than others, but that became routine. And then also just cleaning, and it just seemed like a repetitive cycle every single day. So it depression started to seep in um, because I was used to going to a regular nine to five job and socializing with adults and coming home to not having that as something to do. You have to, I had to learn how to create my own life and not depend on outside distractions. Then days started to feel kind of like Groundhog Day, like that movie, you know, you just repeat, 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 repeat every single day until the weekend of course because then the husband was home and then we had stuff to do but it just felt like it was constant same stuff every single day so here are three tips to help you get out of your funk if you are in one are you ready okay the first one may sound like so simple but we tend to neglect ourselves and this is a big part of what we need to do to make ourselves feel human and to feel ready to go and feel like we can conquer the day is just taking a shower and getting ready for the day. For me, showers in the evening were always easier. So I'd take a shower in the evening and then when I'd wake up, I would do my hair and all of that. And that's still what I do till this day because taking a shower in the morning is not ideal because then I'd really have to rush out the door to get my daughter to school. Um, in the morning, I have coffee with my husband before the kids wake up. So, <laughs> have doing a shower in the morning and having to worry about having time to do my hair I've had to split those up some people prefer showers in the morning but for me the evenings work so you find what works for you and your schedule and your life and you do that so you can feel human and be ready to go so if someone shows up your door shows up at your door like a family or friend or even just a solicitor comes to your door you can at least <laughs> Be presentable and not feel not feel embarrassed for not looking like you were ready for the day and then also if your husband decides to come home for lunch or take you out to lunch then at least you are ready all you have to do is slip on some jeans and a t-shirt and go you don't have to dress like you're going to the Grammys to go out right just go out and have some lunch and feel ready just feel like you were prepared and ready no matter what. You are ready to go for what life has to offer you, right? <laughs> I know that as stay-at-home moms, we just were like, whatever, we're going to wear our yoga pants or our, our night pajamas all day and then not have to worry about anything. But at the same time, if you get dressed like you did when you had a job or if you get dressed every single day and are ready to go, you will just feel completely more motivated and more confident about yourself and not as drabby and down. So that's tip number one. The second tip is stop watching so much TV and stop using your phone for social media or laptop, whatever you're using. If you are on social media, if you find yourself clicking on social media all day, then please try to put your phone down and turn off the TV because hours will pass by and you haven't ac accomplished anything. And yes, your child is there with you. So make it a moment to just bond more with your child or to do something productive. It'll help you feel more accomplished and you're, you will just feel better about the day. You won't feel like it was just a wasted day. So if you find yourself 
turning on the television, make sure to just turn it off unless you need your child to watch something really quick while you do your hair. Hey, awesome. But after that, turn on some music, dance around, you know, move around a little bit more. And trust me, it'll make a huge difference in your day and how you feel. Another thing to do instead of just cleaning, because I know there's a stigma about stay-at-home moms, that that's all we do is clean all day. That is not, for me at least, that is not the case. <laughs> um, I do enjoy reading a book. Um, I've started reading personal development when I started coaching back in 2014, and it has grown on me. I used to hate reading, but with books that help me, I can stay glued on it, especially if it's on a topic that can connect with me and what I need help with. You can dive into a hobby. So if you like crocheting, knitting, sewing, doing crafts, you can do that as well. Scrapbooking, things like that. Just keep yourself occupied doing other things that even if it's creating decorations like this up here, you can do that. You know, it just find something else to do to occupy your time if you are feeling like you're bored or that you're feeling like the day is just flying by and being wasted. Go visit a friend, go for a walk, go to the park. There are so many options. If the day is nice, if it's so nice outside, you can go outside and be active and it'll really help you feel better too, especially if you don't have time to work out. If And if working out's not your thing, at least getting a walk in will get you refreshed outside and you will feel so much better. All right, another thing, tip number three, is create a schedule. Just because you're not at work doesn't mean you shouldn't have a schedule. I think we tend to just let the day fly and be on the seat of our pants. But at the same time, a schedule will help you so much with getting stuff done and also just feeling more accomplished. I know when I stopped working, I just felt like, man, I know I'm a mom and that's a huge deal. Never discount you being at home and being present with your children as not as important because we've been drilled so much in our generation I feel like we've been drilled so much that having a successful career making money doing this doing that in the corporate world was always more important and so we've been drilled that for so long for so you know and then when we have a child and we decide to stay home, it's like a shock to our system. Our mind doesn't know what to think. It's like the unknown. And then we, you know, we get scared. We, we get second guess ourselves. But this is one of the toughest jobs ever. We are that. If we got paid for what we did, we'd, we'd be rich. Okay? So please don't discount you being a stay-at-home mom as not being important just because there is no paycheck attached to it. You matter to this world and to the future of our children and the world that they're going to grow up in. But my tip for scheduling is, is, is instead of feeling like I need to clean the house all day, because that's what I felt like when I became a stay-at-home mom, I was like, I got to clean the whole house or else my husband's going to think I suck and then I'm not going to, you know, then I'm just going to feel like crap because I couldn't accomplish cleaning all day when I had to tend to my daughter who woke up every two hours. It's okay, you guys. You don't have to clean the whole house in, all, in one day. So what I do, for example, because it starts with a T and it just sounds good, I started doing Toilet Tuesday, for example. It sounds cheesy, but it helped me because I was like, just like, when can I fit all this in? And then I'd get overwhelmed and then I would just be, I would be stuck and I wouldn't do anything. So Toilet Tuesday is when I clean the bathrooms and get those done. That way, I feel accomplished. I accomplished what I needed to do for the day, which was clean the toilets. The kitchen is always a struggle. Wipe down the countertops when the spill happens. Don't let it dry up and then have to scrub it off later. <laughs> so if you keep your key kitchen decent, the kitchen is pretty, not that big of a deal. But bathrooms can be a big duty. So just make sure to assign a day for your bathrooms to clean. And then vacuuming I do on Wednesdays and laundry is done on Saturday and that way my husband can help me fold if I really don't feel like folding because that is the part of laundry that I think most people hate is putting the clothes away. Ask for help. Don't be afraid to ask your spouse for help. Yes, they work all day, but at the same time we do too. And we work all day, every day, seven days a week. 
24 hours. We're the ones that wake up to go feed our children in the middle of the night. Well, I mean, as they get older, you don't do that anymore. But when they have bad dreams and nightmares, usually we're the ones that go take care of that, right? So if that is the case, don't feel bad to ask for help. Our husbands are here to be our support system. And if we don't communicate that we need help to them, then again, it, it's just, you know, they won't get it. They'll just think you're doing just fine. Trust me. <laughs> so communicate. But yes, yeah, make a schedule for what you want to do. If you want to make a plan to go to the park, you can plan that. Like say every certain day, any day that's nice, make time to go out, walk, park, whatever. If there's a day that you feel like organize, organizing something, like your refrigerator, assign a day for that. Just make days to go with chores. So that way you're not stuck feeling overwhelmed with having to clean the whole house in one day. Because then if you don't accomplish it, you're just gonna be really hard on yourself. When you do schedules and you accomplish what you did, then you just feel good about yourself. And then your spouse will see it in your face, that he'll see it in the house, and things just get done. Scheduling is amazing. So if you ever feel depression seeping in and you just don't know what to do, change up your routine. It is completely up to us what we do on a daily basis. So if you you are feeling like things are getting like Groundhog Day again, change your, change your stuff up. Find a mom group, either on social media or even one through your church, and connect with more mothers. We can, all can relate to a lot of the stuff we struggle with and we don't have to do it alone. And always know that you aren't alone in all of this and you don't have to be. So never hesitate to reach out to someone that you feel comfortable talking to. But those are the tips I had for you. I really hope it helped. If you like this video, if you like the content, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel or to my blog. I really appreciate your support. I hope you have a wonderful day, you guys. Take care. God bless. Bye.